Hey guys, so today I am going to be giving you a nice and close look at the RK3399 SOM development board. Uh, yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to start right here at the barrel jack right next to it. So right next to it, we have the power on mode. And if you want to know what that means, you flip over the board and on the bottom, it says power on mode, short for power key, open for auto start. So what that means is if you leave it open, when you plug in a power uh, barrel jack, eh, when you plug in your power and you flip this on switch, it will automatically boot the system. Now, if you short this and turn this on, it will not boot. You then have to press the physical power button or you can hook up a alternative power button to this. So say you put it inside of a case, then you can run an alternative button to this lead and power it on remotely, kind of, with a button at the front of a case. So next to that, we have a four pin, 12 volt in power connector, uh, would be from a uh, standard PC power supply. Then we have the power key. That's all this two pin, prong here is, is this button, but yeah, anyways. Next to that we have, ooh, the UART right there. And then we have a bunch of different connectors and like this one's five volt, this one's five volt, five volt, and you can read it here on the side. What they do, it's, uh, bunch of different motor connectors and stuff like that. Okay. Jumping over from there, this is a PCIe um, by one slot. They have it designated for a 4G LTE modem. Um, and there is a SIM card slot on the bottom of the board that I can show you after a bit. Right here we have our uh, accelerometer. As you can see, X, Y, and Z is the triple axis that it can do. Above that is our Wi-Fi uh, antenna mount and our LTE uh, mount, antenna mount. There we go. Uh, then we have the name. And then we have more of those motor connectors right here. They are similar, but uh, these are five and four, four pins and one three pin. And then we go around right here is our uh, M2 uh, MVME SSD connector and uh, retain retention screw. Uh, as it says, this is M keyed. Then we have the user buttons, key uh, one, two, and three. Then we have a camera connector, an MIPI connector. Then down here we have another one and another one. There's tons of them. Uh, next to the one of them, the this one, we have the recovery key. So when powering on the board and holding the recovery key down, you will boot into the uh, Android recovery. And if you hold that down while connected to a PC via USB Type-C, 
it will boot the loader uh, program to sense it. There we go. Uh, reset button, just a momentary reset button. That's all that is. Uh, then we have right here, similar to the power um, header over there, these are headers to extend to uh, buttons for a case. We have power, uh, PK, PWK, I don't know what PWK is. I, I thought it was power, but then I read it. Yeah, power is over there. Not sure what PWK is. Uh, recovery, reset, and key one, which is the user button right there. So I thought that was interesting that they had that. Um, we have an RTC battery, a 20 pin GPIO, and a mic connector. And now we will go up to the SOM itself. So the SOM is underneath this heatsink. We have access to the uh, USB type C for the loader program and access to the three buttons here, which are power, uh, reset, and recovery. Let's see if you can see that. Yep, there you go. And then this side is the five volt power in and you can't plug into it while it's on the development board, which is really nice because it's blocked by that. And here is our fan connector. One thing I want to note about the fan connector is that you can't pull it out. It is a keyed connector. So if you try to brute force it, you will pull the housing off of the main board. Don't ask me how I know that. Anyways, um, let me flip you over here. So we have the e, uh, e display port and all of the pinouts for it, which is really nice. Um, do to do to do. Here is our pinout for the GPIO, and this is the micro SIM card slot. That's it on the bottom of the motherboard, as you can see. Let me go ahead and get the heatsink unscrewed so we can take a closer look at the SOM. Okay, so as you can see, we have all four screws removed, and this is the heatsink. It's a black anodized aluminum heatsink. And there you can see the greasy, oily spot from the thermal pad. And there is our fan. It is a 12 volt fan that is PWM for the temperature. Uh, it's controlled by the uh, configuration file. Okay, so here we have our SOM uh, system on module and right here we have one gigabyte of RAM total. On the other side there is another gigabyte. Here we have a Arc, uh, rock chip. Uh, pretty sure that's the gigabit controller. Then we have our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth or just Wi-Fi. Not really 100%. Uh, yeah, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I never use Wi-Fi on these. I typically use the Ethernet port. But anyways. Um, and then, of course, under this thermal pad, we have our RK3399. And to... Actually, let's just go ahead and remove that. And I'll set it over there on the heatsink. So to remove this, it's like a standard... Uh, RAM module for a laptop. You move the two little modules and it lifts up. As you can see, there is two uh, retaining screw housings, so you can physically affix this to 
the main board if you would like. All right, so let's flip this over. There is our other two memory uh, modules and our power chip. No, power's over here. Either way, there's another uh, rock chip. Chip. Um, there is a metal retaining clip system where they seem to have made or thought about making a um, aluminum little shield for this for ESD I would assume or not ESD but uh, frequency retention and on the front there is also the same retention system and I would assume that you could get that and then still use the heatsink or not I don't know but you can see that the Wi-Fi antennas are outside of the gold inlay uh, outline sorry here is our two type C ports and that's really about it um, this is a very very capable uh, little little tiny board it's a little bit smaller than the Neo 4 but the Neo 4 also does have USB and everything else this you have to adapt it out or you can use the dev board one thing I did forget to show is the ports so starting over here we have Ethernet four USB 3.0's HDMI out oh shit there is an HDMI enable for the input if you short it it works if you don't it doesn't anyways HDMI input to audio audio out audio in and an SD card slot and that's it okay so I do want to say thank you so much for watching this overview of the SOM RK3399 development kit um, the kit does come with everything that you see here plus a USB UART power supply and a type C cable anyways thanks for watching and stay tuned for the channel for more info on this board and the other boards alike thanks for watching bye <laughs> what